Guys, hopefully you've already seen the video that I just posted, which was the Pixel 8 and Pixel Watch 2 event condensed into about a 10 minute video. In that video though, there are some fine details that I, in that amount of time, was simply unable to cover. So in this video, we're going to go over a handful of little things that I think might actually kind of be big things for some people that might go overlooked in the subsequent coverage of the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro. So the first one that I want to talk about is something that I'm actually really excited about. As someone who is constantly making YouTube videos where I try to condense large amounts of information into shorter videos and then bring them to you, the ability to take a long web page, a long thing of text, paragraph after paragraph, and then get the gist of it. Simply get out of it a summary. What I really need to know is something that is going to be potentially invaluable to me and coming with the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro is the ability to do exactly that. They're going to, at some point, I don't know if it's going to be at launch or not, and some of these are going to be at launch. Some of them will be coming shortly after launch, maybe December, something like that. You're going to have the ability to take a web page, hit a summarize button, and then have that use Google Bard AI to summarize that page into a handful of short sentences to make it much easier to digest. Again, this is something that for me is going to be extremely useful. Now, another feature on these Pixel phones that I already use all the time is the improved speech to text. But with the improved smarts of the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro with Tensor G3, apparently we're going to get an even more improved version of that speech to text. It should be even faster and more accurate than before. Now, ignoring things like ums and uhs and things like that at a much uh, better accuracy. Cannot wait to get that because as good as Gboard is now for that, it still is far from perfect, so getting anywhere nearer to perfect is going to be fantastic. But sticking with Gboard, how about the ability to not just spell check the words you are typing, but to actually have Gboard check what you just typed out for spelling, for grammar, for punctuation, and actually help correct all of that stuff for you right there on the fly. I cannot personally wait for that. That's something that certain web browsers like Edge have built in kind of versions of that already, but having this done on your phone, on the fly, it's going to make a lot of us sound a lot smarter than perhaps we already actually are. So this next one is something that we kind of can already do on our phones by downloading Google's Read Aloud application, but now it's going to be built in and I'm really, really happy about this. You ever been reading a long article or looking at anything, a string of text, and rather than summarizing it, you want to have it basically turned into a podcast to be read aloud to you? Well, you're going to be able to do that. You can hold your power button, they say, and select Read Aloud, and off it's going to go, reading that stuff to you in Google's uh, increasingly realistic sounding human voice. I use this with the Read Aloud app all the time. Built in is even better. And you know what else is going to be even better? How about Magic Eraser? The ability to circle an object and have it deleted from your photo. Now, going forward with the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, it's not just going to be this smudgy looking thing. They're actually going to use generative AI to create brand new pixels to take the place of the object that you erased. And the results, as you can see in this video, are absolutely stunning. Magic Eraser is going to be getting a massive, massive improvement. I personally have been using Retouch instead of Magic Eraser. And with this improvement, maybe I'm gonna go back to Magic Eraser. Another Pixel feature I use a ton of the time is call screening. And oh my goodness gracious, is it getting a lot better. They've got this video now that they showed of what this new call screening thing is going to sound like. And it could almost pass as a human at this point. It sounds so much more realistic. Hi, I'm a Google virtual calling assistant recording this call on behalf of the person you're trying to reach. Can you say what you're calling about? Hi, you've won an all expense paid trip to the Caribbean. Press eight to claim your prize now. Unfortunately, the person you're calling cannot take your call right now. Have a nice day. It's going to talk to the person for you, and then you're going to get little answers to pop up. Let's say the example they gave was, I have a package for you. You see that written out on your screen. You can hit a button that says, leave it at the front door. And in a supernatural voice, not supernatural, in a very natural voice, a voice from the heavens, it will tell this person, leave it at the front door. And it just, it sounds like you have an, a, a true assistant answering your phone calls for you. I love call screening and making that voice more natural, I think is going to help 
uh, maybe reduce the amount of times the frequency with which people hear that and just hang up. They're actually going to potentially think this is a real human now, and that is going to be really, really useful. Maybe not so useful, though, is going to be that temperature sensor. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So there is a temperature sensor on the back of the Pixel 8 Pro. And the biggest thing I want to tell you guys is that right now, when this thing comes out, it's not actually going to have an option in it to check your skin temperature. When you go to use it, it's going to ask you what kind of surface you're actually going to be measuring. They have apparently filed with the FDA to be allowed to scan your skin temperature, but that's something that has not yet been approved. So right now, you're going to be measuring your steak that you're cooking or something like that, but not your skin itself. When that is a hopefully approved, you'll be able to check your skin temperature, throw that into Fitbit, but for now, keep that in mind, it might not be happening at the very beginning. And then the last one, we saw this thing called Video Boost that looked absolutely incredible, but there's a really important detail here, right? Whenever you're using Video Boost, it films the video, and when you're done, you have a video, but it's not the Video Boost version. This might have got missed by a lot of people. That video has to be uploaded to the cloud where their data centers are going to go through frame by frame applying their HDR technology to it. How long is this going to take? Depends on how long the video is. It might be a little while, maybe an hour or two, maybe tomorrow morning before that video is done and then it will be available to you on your device. If you're like me and you shoot videos and you use Google Photos, you may have come across this already where photos, or videos I should say, will say processing, sometimes for a long time, probably gonna be something like that. So this is not a deal where you're shooting the video and then boom, it's an incredible looking video. It's going to be a decent looking video, but maybe in a couple hours, hopefully no longer than that, you'll have a great looking video that can compete with any camera on the market. The same is true for Video Night Sight. Yes, the output, the final result of this, is incredibly impressive. However, it has to be uploaded to the cloud and then processed and then sent back to you. So again, something to definitely keep in mind. Guys, those are just a handful of things that I think are gonna go kind of underappreciated, swept under the rug a little bit as we talk about the Pixel going forward. If I've missed out on any that you think should have been talked about, drop them in the comments down below, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.